Hi everyone, this is Suzanne of Zuzanetic Concoctions. Um, I've decided to uh, let you in on uh, my journey. Um, I've um, started a fast. I'm on day 11 today. And um, I thought I would record a vlog of uh, my experience and uh, why I'm doing this and what I've been doing specifically on um, on this fact. Um, to let you know a little bit uh, more about me, um, I'm 55 years old, I'm postmenopausal. The reason why I decided to do this fast is um, because of my allergies. Uh, I'm allergic to wheat, dairy, soy, mustard, eggs. So um, eating can be very difficult and um, it's easy to cheat and for those of you who have food allergies you know exactly what I'm talking about. Some of the symptoms that I experience um, after a um, cheat and when I say cheat I mean cheating on foods that I'm allergic to um, is um, severe inflammation, um, eczema, itching, um, my hearing is affected, my eyesight is affected. As a matter of fact, my eyesight has uh, gotten worse. Uh, I now have to wear glasses when I watch TV, which I never had to do before. So um, that's kind of upsetting for me. And of course, you know, it's my own fault. I've always had weight issues since I was um, a teenager. And today I still struggle being at this period in my life um, it's so easy to gain weight but uh, five times as difficult to to lose it also too I should mention um, with full disclosure that I am NOT seeing a doctor during this fast although I recommend that people do especially if you're on medications I'm not on any type of medication. I've always been fairly healthy um, and fit. I go to the gym on a regular basis. And my normal food regimen is a healthy one. I'm taking it day by day. I'm listening to my body. Um, originally, this was supposed to be a seven-day fast. But I felt so good at seven days, I knew I could go further. Um, so I decided to go to day 14. And after day 14, I may go to day 21. And uh, if I can hack it, I may do the full 30 days. Um, after which, these will probably take a week or two of transitioning. Yes, today is June 12th. So June 30th is my uh, finishing date, should I decide to um, prolong um, this fast. So we'll see what happens. To start you off with some of the um, information on fasting, I'm doing a lemon fast. So I started um, 11 days ago out of a whim. Uh, the day before I started my fast, I um, ate things I shouldn't have eaten and decided at the last minute that I was going to fast to, to clean my system and rid my body of toxins and that type of thing and um, and also lose weight so it was a, um, a kind of a two-for-one deal if uh, if you can call it that I started it without doing much research I didn't do my research until about day two or three of my fast in fact at the beginning I wasn't too thirsty like day one and two I don't know why, but I wasn't. Um, I drank some water, also drank some water kefir, which has a little bit of sugar. Um, that could have helped um, help me in the sense that I wasn't hungry um, as much on day two. A lot of people um, complain about hunger pains on day two. But I should also tell you too that I've done intermittent fasting for for a few years um so that's nothing new to me and i've also fasted for one or two days as well when i was um doing lchf and uh, or keto if you want to call it um, so my body was used to being without food for certain periods of time um, but that's why 
I did well at the beginning of, of this fast. Also too, I want to point out if, if, um, people who are watching this want to do their own research, um, check out Dr. Jason Fung. He's a nephrologist or a kidney specialist that uh, treats diabetes patients in Toronto. Um, he's known worldwide now. He's done tons of YouTube videos and interviews. And um, there was one specific website which is really good. It's called fastingtalk.com. He's been interviewed extensively along with his um, fellow clinician, Megan Ra uh, Ramos. And the show is um, conducted by Jimmy Moore, who's really huge in the LCHF keto community. And um, anyway, there's tons of information there. You've got to listen to a lot of podcasts. But I'm going by uh, what Megan talked about in a lot of the interviews. And she gives great tips on uh, how to do a fast properly. And that's a protocol that I am following. And um, here it is. It's very simple. Salt, potassium, magnesium, along with your water. Those things, three minerals, are really important in order to keep your electrolytes balanced. And trust me, um, being at day 11, it hasn't been that difficult, specifically for that reason. I've been taking 400 milligrams of magnesium twice a day. Um, before I started this, I was taking 200, I guess, in the morning and sometimes at night. Um, so I take um, 400 in the morning, 400 in the evening. I also find that the magnesium also helps you sleep. I take uh, Himalayan salt. Up until about two, three days ago, I found out that Megan re recommends putting it under your tongue. You take about uh, a little less than an eighth of a teaspoon, which is kind of like, uh, I guess, a, uh, a pinch. But right now I'm taking uh, a dose of salt three times a day, morning, noon, and uh, in the evening, um, just to make sure I'm, uh, I'm balanced. You may find that you might be retaining water, but trust me, it doesn't, it doesn't last because the more water you drink anyway, the more you will release. So you won't see that swelling or bloated feeling um, for very long. As uh, far as hunger goes, it comes and goes, but it's not a ravenous hunger. It's kind of a low grade hunger. And of course, depending on how badly you want this or want the results, it's a small payoff. So it's um, easily managed. Um, one of the side effects I should mention, and this started on day three for me, is the runs. And I realized that when it started that my body was detoxing. And unfortunately, it's been detoxing ever since. Some days are better than others. Uh, one day, um, I went to the bathroom like 10 times. This morning, it was like three times. Um, so uh, the body goes up and down. Also, too, because of um, inflammation and the detox, um, my skin is breaking in welts on my hand. And uh, I know that's a symptom of uh, detoxification. Um, another interesting thing that's been happening is joint pain and this numbness in my leg, which, by the way, I experienced last year. And I haven't experienced um, hip pain or this numbness since I would say oh, at least eight months ago, if, if not longer. But it came to surface, I would say, a couple of days ago. But as soon as it came, it went. So I, I could only um, surmise that it's the body kind of reminding you of of uh, what it went through and then releasing it if that makes any sense because part of doing this fast too for me was to heal my body 
And in order to heal your body, your body has to, I guess, be at a certain point in the, um, in the cell production, in the renewing of the cells. So it kind of makes sense to me that my body was releasing whatever pain I had experienced on a physical level. Sleeping has been okay. It could be better. I, um, I take my magnesium at night to help me sleep. Falling asleep has been okay. Um, the problem now is, is in the morning, I wake up much, much earlier. We're talking like 4 or 4.30 and not being able to fall back asleep. My head almost feels a little bit wired. It could be that cortisol levels um, are elevated. As far as activity goes, as I was going to the gym up until last week, but not doing anything strenuous, mainly yoga. Depending on how I feel, I will keep doing the yoga. Right now, I'm still doing my part-time job. So this fast has not interfered with that. Um, I feel okay. Um, the only issues I've had is being outside in the sun for a prolonged period. So I try not to um, stay out for longer than an hour and a half. I've done the two hour thing and by the end of two hours I, I came in and uh, I was a little tired and, um, and thirsty. <laughs> Uh, which goes kind of, which kind of goes without saying. Um, I can't complain about any major issues. Sometimes I feel borderline a little bit uh, uh, weak on the verge, but as soon as I drink water or have some salt, it it goes away. It 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 disappears. Um, I should tell you too, um, before I forget, is I've lost 14 pounds in 11 days, which is great. Yay! But I know too that a lot of that is is water. Um, I average about one to one and a half pounds um, of weight loss um, a day, um, and it's 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 very encouraging because I plan on um, trying to keep it off after after this is over. Um, I'm going to go to day 14 of this fast and maybe beyond. Um, they say that your body renews itself after a 30 day fast completely. Every single cell in your body will be brand new. So I'm hoping that besides the weight, I get rid of um, some of my allergies, if not all. I'm not looking for a miracle, but it almost sounds too good to be true. If that happens, I wanted to take issue too with one of the things Dr. Fung says. Something that I actually don't agree with him, unless you look at it in a different vein, and he may be speaking from a different perspective, So, but it can be confusing to people. He says, you don't experience muscle loss during a fast. I'm not gonna say he's totally wrong, but it could be just the way he explained it, uh, not giving enough detail. When you're fasting, you release a lot of water, and a lot of that water comes from your muscles. So you're not losing muscle, but you are losing mass, or should I say you're losing muscle density so your body is not eating away at the muscle, um, which I think um, people interpret it that way. Because if you have a lot of fat to lose, your body is going to live off the fat, not the muscle. Your body only eats the muscle if there's a lack of fat. So, um, But it's just the way he explained it. Um, I think what he means is that you don't lose any muscle, but you do, and he's never said this, you do lose muscle density. Um, I'm not worried about that right now. I, um, I used to be worried about that, but I figure, you know what, muscle has memory. When I finish this fast and I'm able to work out the way I, I did before, I'm easily going to gain that muscle back. So it's it's not a big deal but fasting actually is is anti-aging um 
I wish a lot of people knew about this because it's actually good for you to fast at least one day or two days a month, if not every week. And it's also, and I have to make, I have to say this, I think it fasting is the thing, the best thing you can do for weight loss. People won't agree with me uh, on that. But it is. It's the easiest. Why go on a starvation diet where, where you will lose um, a lot of muscle and starve yourself? If you're going to starve yourself, why not just drink water and be done with it? And you lose like a pound, a pound and a half every day and worry about maintaining the weight after you finish the fast. Um, this way too, if you follow a low calorie diet, your body thinks it's, it's, it's starving. Fasting is, is totally, totally different. Um, there's no yo-yoing involved. The only, only thing at the end of the fast is breaking the fast and you have to be careful. Um, but I'll do a, I might do a vlog on that, um, when I get to it. But anyway, I may do a follow up. Um, before um, I end this fast. If you have any questions or comments, please uh, leave them and I'd love to, to read them. And if you are on a fasting journey, oh, please let me know. I hope I covered a lot of things on this. I may have forgotten something, but hey, if I do forget something, I'll, uh, I'll write it out in a, in a post on this, uh, on this video. Anyway, thank you so much for watching and um, until next time. Bye for now.